Hi everyone! This is part one of a two-part tutorial which will show you how to work with both Python and R in the same Jupyter Notebook on Google Colab's platform. Google Colab is free, but you need to be logged into a Google account in order to be able to use it. Currently, I'm a graduate student studying statistics and data science at Temple University, and I use both Python and R. From my experience, I've found that Python is the better language for exploratory data analysis and data cleaning, while R offers a more robust library of statistical modeling tools. In this first video, I will walk through exploratory data analysis with Python, and in the next video, I will show you how to model with R. Let's get started. The data set that we will work with is from Duke University, and the data is on Duke Forest. The data is publicly available, and I put a link to the site at the bottom of the, the notebook. Duke Forest is comprised of approximately 7,000 acres of land in Durham, Orange, and Alamance counties in North Carolina. Faculty and students from Duke tracked 88 distinct trees from 1998 to 2001, sorry, 2011, by measuring the diameter of each tree's base. Tree growth can be used as a proxy for the overall health of a forest. The goal of our modeling session is to analyze tree growth over time and infer which variables best explain tree growth. Before we get to modeling, we'll go through exploratory data analysis in this video with Python. So the first thing that we want to do is load in our libraries. We have pandas and numpy that we'll use for our data analysis and to store our data. Then we have a few graphing libraries. We'll mostly work with Seaborn and Plotly to plot out our data. Finally, we have an extension for the to work with R, but I'll touch on that more in the next video. So to run this, we just hit Shift Enter, and we have all of our libraries imported. The next thing I want to do is import the Excel file. That's where how I have the data stored. So to do that, we can just drag and drop into the file here, and it'll pop up right here, and we have it loaded. Great. Okay, now let's get this data into a pandas data frame. So I'll put a comment here. Whenever you put a hashtag, that comments out whatever you type out, so this won't be run. Okay, and we'll store this and we'll call the data frame df, and we're going to set that equal to, and we're going to call pandas with pd dot read, and you'll see Google Colab autofills this pretty quickly for you. So we are going to read this into Excel, so you can hit tab or enter to autofill that. Parentheses, apostrophe, then we need to type in the name of the data, trees. XLSX. Okay, and then we can just call DF. We don't have to print just because of the Jupyter environment. It'll run and uh, it'll illustrate it for us. So we can hit Shift Enter. Great. So it looks like all of our data is loaded. We have the tree ID. This is the specific tree. We have the year of the recording. We have the size of the diameter. And then we have three potential ex explanatory variables, annual precipitation, summer PDSI, that's how dry it is in the summer, and winter temperature. And we can see that from the year that this is time series data that we're working with. Okay, from the site, we know that there are 88 distinct trees within the data set, and we can check this within the data frame and this is pretty easy so we'll call the data frame DF and we're going to call the specific column ID so this is the tree ID so brackets apostrophe I D and then we put a dot and we're going to call the function n unique and what this function does is it finds all the unique values within the column and it returns it to us. So we should get 88 for this. Okay, 
parentheses, then shift enter to run. Great, so it looks like we were able to confirm that. All right, moving on, let's take a look at the data collected by year. So we can see that the year here is 98, 2002, 2004. We're going to take a look at all the recordings per year. So that's a pretty easy to do again within pandas. So we'll call the DF again. So data frame brackets apostrophe YR for year dot value counts. And this will count all the number of trees that were measured per year. And then we're going to sort this. So we're going to call the dot sort index. And the reason why we're sorting it, the index and not the actual values, is when we call this, we get a series. And the year will be the index and the values will be the total value count. So it, we're, we want to sort this by year. And we'll see when I run this. So shift enter. Great. So looks like it goes from 1998 to 2011. And it looks like it's collected almost every two years. There are some discrepancies here in the data. So we'll notice that it goes from 1998 and it jumps from 2002, 2004, 2006. So it looks like there might be some data missing from 2000. Either it wasn't recorded that year or it was excluded from this data set that we have. Okay. And then we'll also notice that there's a bit of discrepancy in the remaining years. So it was collected every two years, then it was collected annually from 2006 to 2008. And then we can see 2009 is missing here. So there's again discrepancy in this time series. Finally, we'll see that in 2007, there might be some, mis there most likely is missing data. So in 2006, there were 64 recorded trees, and that fell down to 15. And then in 2008, there were 77 recorded trees. So for whatever reason, there were a bunch of trees that just weren't recorded in 2007. Okay. So what we can do next is we can calculate the actual growth rate of the diameter in centimeters. So we have the actual absolute value and we might want to also not just take a look at the absolute value, but look at the growth rate of that value. And it's pretty easy to calculate the percentage change in pandas. So what we'll do is we'll start with calling the data frame again, df dot sort values parentheses oops, by is equal to brackets. And then we want to sort by year and we want to sort by ID. And the reason that we want to do this is we don't want to calculate the percentage change for this tree and mix it somehow have that mixed up with this one. So sorting it by this way can help us do that. So let's do that. And if we call it again, we'll see it's sorted. So we can see the two nineties and then the years are sorted here. Okay. All right. So in this same cell block, let's do df brackets and we're going to create a new column for our centimeter growth. So let's do apostrophe cm growth and then we're going to tell pandas how to create this new column. So what we'll do is equals to df group by and we want to group by the id and the year. So we'll do that here parentheses id then we'll do cm 
dot percentage change. And this is the function that will actually calculate it. So it, Pandas makes it very easy to calculate this. They even have a built-in function. Okay, then we'll just call the data frame at the end to check out that it works well. So shift enter to run this. Okay, so it does look like it worked well. So when we calculate the percentage change, we'll have some loss of data because you need the previous year's data to, or the, the, that you need previous data in order to calculate the percentage change. So all the data from 1998 won't be the, we won't have percentage changes for those because we don't have data before then. So every, everything here will have a bit of data loss here. Otherwise, it looks like we calculated this correctly. So let's take a look and we can just double check, have a sanity check and just double check it here. So we can manually calculate it just to make sure that it was calculated correctly. So 4.4 .4 divided by four minus one and that's 10% and that's 10% here. Great, so it looks like it calculated it correctly and it created the column for us. All right, okay. Now that we have that, let's start graphing out some of the exploratory data analysis. And graphs are super useful when we're doing this. And there's a few different ways that we could do this. So the first thing I want to do is I'll just do make a correlation heat map now that we have all the data that we want to work with. And for this heat map, I will use Seaborn. And I am also going to just make some parameters. And this is more of a stylistic thing. If you don't want to do this, you don't have to. Um, I like to make it a bit bigger. going to run this looks like I typed that out correctly okay let's actually get to plotting this out so the way that we'll do this is we're going to create a correlation matrix and I'll just show you how that looks like so pandas makes a lot of things super easy with exploratory data analysis so if you just want to see a quick correlation matrix between all the numerical values you can get that very quickly. So we'll call df dot core, and that's the correlation function. Parentheses, shift enter, and then we'll get it. So we can see that this is the correlation matrix. And there are, so the ID isn't really a numerical one, so we can choose to get rid of that or ignore that, but that, that's, I'll, I'll just keep it in here just for simplicity's sake and just know that this is an arbitrary number that doesn't have any relevance to our analysis. But then we have annual precipitation and we can see if that's linearly correlated to the centimeters or centimeter growth. So from, it's kind of hard to read this, which is why correlation matrices were made for with plotting libraries like Seaborn. So that, that's what we'll do. So I will show you right now how to visualize this. So we'll just call this core matrix and we'll save that correlation and we'll call this just our figure one is equal to and I'm going to call Seaborn. So we SNS dot heat map core matrix that we just saved annote is equal to so that's the annotation so we want text in 
there to see the actual percentage Pearson correlation there. True. And this is a stylistic one. I like the blue one. So I'm going to call this blues. Okay. Shift enter. It may take a couple seconds. Great. So we have our correlation matrix visualized. And it's obviously easier to read than just a table because we can quickly spot if there are any strong or strong positive or negative correlations. So summer PDSI, which is drought during the summer, is highly correlated to annual precipitation. That's not too surprising. If we look at our dependent variable, the variable that we're going to try to model and infer, it doesn't look like it's linearly correlated to any of the exploratory uh, explanatory variables that we have. Same thing for centimeter growth. It doesn't, there aren't any real strong uh, linear correlations that we can take away from this. So that, that's something that we'll have to keep in mind is if we want to work with a linear model, those may not be the best to work with, or we may have to get some additional data in order to be able to work with it because none of these seem to show a linear linear relationship to the dependent variable. Okay, great. So this next one, this is a bit much for some people. I like it because it helps visualize all the data. I think that if you're doing a presentation, you probably shouldn't put this one in because it can be overwhelming. But this is a pair plot. And again, this will come from Seaborn. So the way that we do this is I'll create another figure. We'll call this just fig2 is equal to S and S, calling the Seaborn again, dot pair plot. And we're going to call the DF. So it is going to pair it out. And this one definitely will take a couple seconds. Depending on the size of the data, this can also take a while too. I've, if you, even if it's a relatively small data set with only a couple thousand, or if it breaches into the hundreds of thousands, it, it might not be able to do it. But anyway, we have it plotted out here. And what this does is, similarly, it shows all this data here. So it, should, it plots out the linear correlations, if there are any. And one thing that we can see is you can kind of see the ones that are. So annual precipitation, and this is probably that summer PDSI that we saw where there was a correlation. And yep, yep, it is. So... That, that's the only one where you actually see some sort of linear relationship. The other ones, it, we can't really find any linear relationships. What this also, what this pair plot also does is diagonally, it gives us a histogram. So this, this can be useful too. So if we look at CM, CM, so this is the centimeter. So it looks like most of the centimeters might be smaller, smaller trees. And we'll plot this out as well, just to get a better look at this, but we, we can infer some data from here as well. Okay, so let's actually plot this one out in a histogram just to get a better look at it. So we'll use matplotlib for this one and We'll call plt for matplotlib dot hist, and that calls the histogram. Then we need to put the x is equal to, and in this case, it'll be the centimeter. So we'll call df bracket cm. Then I'll just put a line with, this is another stylistic thing that I like, just to see the differences in the bars, it makes it stick out a bit more. Big fan of purple, so I am going to put purple. 
and then the number of bins is going to be 15 and that's just how the data will be collected plt.xlim and this is another stylistic one just because it prints out a bit off center and that really bugs some people so I like to make it as neat as possible and this this is stylistic so plus one okay so brackets plt dot x label for this it'll be centimeters Then we have the Y label, and that is the number of observations. Oops. Okay. Then PLT X ticks. And this will be the ticks on the bottom. I always kind of like to format this just because I like to see it bit differently actually before I do this let's just give you give everybody an idea and yep yeah, I made a mistake here okay um, actually the way it's bucketed is fine then let's just finally give it a title so plt dot title Trees by diameter. Okay, so what can we take away from this? From this histogram, it looks like most of the trees that have been recorded are pretty small. So they're between somewhere between zero and five centimeters in length. There's a huge amount of them and Probably if we take the mean or the median, it's actually hard to eyeball this. So let me just do this. I'll say I'll say it's seven something. So df dot median eight point seven. So mo most of the trees skew smaller. So that that probably tells us that this forest was maybe recently planted and it's not too old. And all we have a few larger trees that were maybe there before. And there were a bunch of trees that may have been planted recently in the past few decades. So what this really tells us is that the, the tree, trees within the forest probably skew a bit young. And yep. And when you have the median, the mean, there's a there's a skew to it, and these large values skew the mean, where the median may be a better may give you a better idea of the population of the trees by diameter. Okay. All right, so we have that plotted out. Let's go a bit further, and so. Given these varying tree sizes, I probably want to bucket these into different sizes. So, so there we'll, we'll bucket this into four sizes. Seedlings are the smallest, and they are 2.54 centimeters or smaller. Saplings are the second smallest or the second youngest, and in terms of their size in diameters in centimeters they vary from greater than 2.54 to 12.45 then we have pole timbers which are the second biggest and they vary from 12 point from greater than 12.45 centimeters in diameter up to 22.6 and finally saw timbers are trees that are bigger than 22.6 diameters in centimeters. Okay, 
So let's do that. We are going to add another column to our data frame that will label the size of the tree. So this tree here, it should be a sapling. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a comment here, categorize the trees by size. Okay. And the way that I'll do this is I'll do, I'll put in the conditions first, then I'll put the name of the values, and then using NumPy and Pandas, we'll add those, add this column in. So. Okay, I have my conditions in. Now I'm going to type in the values. So we have the seedlings are the smallest. Saplings are the next biggest. Old timbers are the second largest. Saw timbers are the largest. Great. So from these two lists, we can create a column and to create a column we go df bracket the name of the column call this tree size category and we'll use numpy for this so equals to np dot select and we're going to select the conditions and we're going to select the values okay Then finally, we'll call the data frame to see that it went through. Okay, great. So it looks like this went well and it went through. So saplings, saplings, saw timbers. Yep. And if you look at the corresponding size, diameter size in centimeters, it seems to line up with the conditions that we put in. So great. Okay, so one of the last things that we'll do for the exploratory data analysis is we will see how these, if we should group these and look at these, all of these trees grouped together by their tree size categories. So most likely we would think that saplings are less mature and they'll probably grow a lot quicker relative to saw timbers where saw timbers are most likely a lot older than saplings so they probably won't grow at the same pace and when we start to model in the next video we'll use something called a mixed effect model that takes this in, into account and takes the clustering in, into account so we'll we'll check to see in python if we can visually see the clustering and Plotly quickly is becoming one of my favorite graphing modules within Python. And it's not something I've used much up until this point, but I'm definitely using it a lot more. So let's, we're going to plot out a scatter plot of all of these where we'll take the centimeters, the diameter in centimeters as the dependent variable and then we'll plot it against a few of the independent variables here. Same thing for C, uh, centimeter growth, where that will be the dependent variable, and we'll see if there's any clustering with centimeter growth. Okay, so let's get started. And the way that we call Plotly is with px dot scatter. Data frame is equal to df. X is equal to, we'll do summer PDSI, will be the first explanatory variable that we'll graph out. Y is equal to centimeters. Then we'll also denote the color by the tree size category.
Okay, and then finally, we are going to put the trend line as an OLS. And we are going to run this. Shift Enter. Okay, so it looks like the trends for all of these groupings go the same way. However, the groupings seem to, we might need to work with a mixed effects model because the groupings seem to be significant. So if, for example, the seedlings, all of them are way down here and we don't see any green dots up here with the saw timbers and there might be a little bit of an overlap with some of the or clo almost some overlap with some of the saplings but it looks like the groupings and the mixed effects model is one we'll have to implement for this data okay let's take a look at how this looks with the centimeter growth now. So in this case, there doesn't seem to be any grouping. We can see there's a lot of overlap between the different tree sizes. Some of the greens are well, are scattered with the saw timbers, the saplings, and we see this in a variety of places. So when, when we take the percentage change, we do transform the data. So some of that may be lost and some of that, and when we are trying to express the growth rate, it is different from the actual absolute size. So most likely a mixed effects model won't work too well with this. And we'll see more of this when we actually model this out in R. Okay, let's just take a look at one more scatter plot just to convey this. And let's do this with winter temperature. And one thing also to note is there, like before, there aren't really too many significant linear correlations with these. So, that, that will be an issue with any linear model. So it's a bit tough to hover, hover over some of these and actually get them, but it, well, you can clearly see that there's that the R squared for, for example, for the saw timbers, it's super low. It's, <laughs> it's almost negligible, but we'll keep on going through these, shift enter. Okay, similar situation, so the trends seem roughly similar. Yeah, it's, it's tough to take away anything from these. And what we can take away though is there definitely is clustering with these. And let's do this, CM growth. And again, for the data with the percentage change, there definitely is not clustering. It's all over the place. So we would expect a mixed effects model not to work not too well with this transformed data. Okay, great. Well, in the next video, I will go over how to model this in R to, we'll try to inference the actual, the actual absolute centimeter, the diameter size in centimeters. And we'll act, try to also explain the growth rate. I hope that you found this useful. There, I do have previous vi videos on how to initially start with pandas if you're unsure about that. But I hope that this was useful. If you have any questions, comments, feel free to comment below, connect with me. Otherwise, happy coding.